Ah, yes, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to Veterans Minimum. Live from Sticky Paws, joining me is my dog, Good Jay's on. Oh, good I appreciate Jay's it. Pre- nice jersey, Jersey Jam, rocking and rolling. Yeah, Boy, yeah. I voted out. I'm out of Jersey Jam, made it to the Sweet 16, and then it was LG's <laughs> for me. Uh, Josh Williams in the building. What's good, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Uh, I, I, I'm still upset about that one. You know, listen, Powder Blue. We're, I was rocking with the Powder Blue. There, no football jerseys made it to the Elite Eight or the Final Four. So that was shocking. I didn't see that coming. So, But uh, but shout out to you for being a part. And Hell yeah. Thank you for having me on the show, as, as always, on a Monday. Dude, I feel like a couple of weeks ago, we talked about athletes and betting. And we might have put a hex on all of you guys because it seems like every week there's a new athlete getting caught in a scandal. <laughs> um, and and I do want to preface by saying, from day one, my stance has remained the same. If you're an athlete and you're betting on other sports other than yours, I'm cool with it. Have fun. Indulge. You're one of us. You know I'm on your side. But when you got dudes like Jonte Porter that apparently bet on himself – which I'm a big fan of betting on yourself. Not in like real that. life. In Not real like life. That, yeah. <laughs> but apparently um, some suspicious betting was going on. Uh, reports have come out that he bet unders on games that he was playing. And then when you go back and you watch the tape, you're seeing how off he was on three-point shots or missing free throws. Man, it's uh these are like federal crimes too, right? Like you can't you can't be rigging and throwing games. Do you feel like we're responsible for this? Because ever since I brought it to light, it seems like every week we had Otani, <laughs> we had him, we had dudes in college. One thousand percent I feel like we're responsible <laughs> for this. Uh you know, listen, um like like you said, these are federal crimes, you know what I'm saying? And and the more and more I, I feel like, you know, because after we talked about Otani, uh, there were a couple uh, IG pages where I actually started seeing, and I put this up on my page, um, where they actually showed, oh, Shohei was plus minus this, and then this happened. And it's like, oh, that's real interesting. I feel like more and more of that stuff, man, which is which is scary and sad because you don't want to think that players are tampering with the the integrity of games. But man, listen, because how, how much how much money was uh, was was Porter on the line for? How much was he on the hook for? I think it was a couple thousand. Yeah, and you know it gets suspicious whenever it's like a backup player, right? Yeah. Like whenever it's it gets suspicious when it's not a star player because the star player makes so much money that dude, what is a couple? What is a hundred grand to Paul George? Yeah. And to Damian Lillard when they're making fifty million a year, I I think it was I think uh, now that you say it I think um, his his salary was five hundred fifty thousand right and um, the bets were totaling over a million right and well so that's what I'm saying with yeah. him it becomes more evident that you might be doing some shit yeah whereas you never see the big name athletes get caught in these scandals and it goes back to what I was saying when sports betting first got legalized. And it became more accessible and it became more less frowned upon, I should say, right? You were no longer a piece of shit if you sports bet. Yeah. Ten years ago, I was like, oh, watch out for that. <laughs> Shady guy. person. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> but what happened was it became so accessible and and people put their guard down to it. That my case used to be, yo, the integrity of the game is not going to get jeopardized because, number one, it's always been the sports books that sniffed this shit out. You know who sniffed out uh, Jonte Porter? The sports books because mm. they're like, yo, bro, what was why, why is someone betting 10k on his under three point shots? And then they do the investigation. Oh, shit, it's actually him, <laughs> right? That's it. So was sad. always gonna be the backup players, the 12th guy off the bench. It was gonna be college kids, even with the NIL, mm. because not every kid is like James McCain on Duke who is making like 1.8 million off sure. NIL deals. Sure, it's never gonna be that guy, it's gonna be. The walk on, yeah. It's gonna be 
the maybe the point guard that isn't isn't a big name that controls the flow of the game. Right. Like I can have five turnovers and really impact the game. Right. You know what I mean? And it's always been it's always been the, the sports books. You go back to Arizona State, you go back to Boston College, you go back to Hawaii football. Like it's always the sports books that are like, yo, there's some shady shit going on with the Sun Devils. And then they investigate it. They're like, damn, why has this guy got 30 in the first half? And then he goes one for 20 in the second half. I'm exaggerating, but like uh, I've, Stephen I've, Smith was uh, the the guard. Headache Smith. Yeah, headache was his, was his nickname, yep. and you know he threw away his whole career to make a couple extra. You know, and he was making good money. You know, he's showing up with Rolls, not Rolls Royce, but like Cadillacs and shit. Yeah. But what I'm getting to is, it's always the sports books that sniff this out. So they're the ones that police it because they don't want to give anybody free, free shit and free bets. Yeah, and with him, it's just, it's sad, bro, because. You're throwing away your career. It's the same shit with like Tim Donahue, right? Tim Donahue. Have you watched that documentary on Netflix? No, I still have to watch it. You got it, bro. I, I gotta watch it's it. Amazing. It's amazing, especially you're a big basketball fan, and like, still a now, sad, sad period. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But as a basketball fan, as a sports fan, first and foremost, and then also now you're like getting more accustomed to like the betting vernacular and just being in the betting space, being on the show with me. That's like what we talk about the majority of the time. Yeah, you see how easy it is to to affect games the way he was. But then when you really think of it, unless the numbers he was saying he was getting are not what they actually were, he was making like 400 k a year, bro. And he was only making $2,000 off winning picks. Yeah. Which is like, bro, is it is it worth it? No. And that's why I would always say the integrity of the game was never going to be jeopardized by the big name players. It was going to be the low end guys that 50K can influence you. Yeah. Bro, if I'm LeBron James, you come up to me like, yo, bro, we'll throw you 100K in this Nike duffel bag if you throw, you know, if you miss your free throws. You'd be like, suck my balls, bro. I make that shit in nine dribbles. Yeah. Legit. Right? So it's not going to affect me. So it's always going to be the lesser player, a guy like John T. Porter. Yeah. And I think what's happening is, bro, it's everywhere, dude. Every commercial break, there's an ad for... DraftKings fan duel underdog fucking bet prize in, bet picks, MGM bet MGM Caesars yeah. like better you know, everybody everybody <laughs> yeah. right yeah. so it's only gonna get worse and worse and I feel like what do you think they should do to to for the player well you talking about Jonte or are you talking about just in I'm general? talking about in general like the whole sports landscape um, now with this influence in, in general I feel like uh, I, I saw some um, some college coaches saying that they don't want player props for college and I think that that's actually not a bad way to go truthfully because these kids these kids like you said can be influenced you know what I'm saying like you know not everybody at every school especially when you go to you know I always use Middle Tennessee State but you start going to those mid majors those kids aren't getting NIL deals and if they are it's a mom and pop down the street it's not they're not getting six figure seven figure NIL deals so those kids yes 1000% I got to make four threes I'm going to make two maybe I'll pass up a few threes that I usually would take doesn't necessarily look shady in the moment but I know that usually I would take this three, but I'm not going to take it because I can't make more than three. You know what I'm saying? Like just little stuff, um, you know, if, if especially if I personally can control it and then I can give my money to Nick and say, hey, go put $10,000 on this. I'll make sure it, it hits. That's dangerous. So player props in college, I definitely feel like that wouldn't be the worst thing that comes out. Because we already have so much betting on college and stuff now. But the players, you don't want to start having that much control, giving that much control over to these children. Because they, obviously they can read, they can see what their numbers are. So, you know, like, oh, I know I'm going to hit more than that. Or I know, ooh, that's, that's dicey. I may not hit that. Very easy for them to be seduced by, like you said, a better coming to them. Like any of us, you know what I mean? Like any, any, anybody in the space now, because there's so many people in the space now too. Whereas when you think of Headache Smith, there wasn't that many people in the space. It was, it was very much in the underbelly of the society. You know what I'm saying? Now regular Joe Blow, you know, doctor is putting up real money. And yeah, he, like any of these people can influence these kids. So that would probably be my, my biggest thing would be taking the player props out. Yeah. Well, I know college, some college. Well, some sports books don't allow college props for that reason mm. on players. 
You know, it's a fascinating discussion. I feel like if you bet in order to enhance your performance, do you have a problem with that? Yeah. Still not good. Still not good. Still, because it's such a slippery slope. Slippery. That's slippery. You know what I mean? Like, because the second you do it, I could easily go the other way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the Pete Rose argument. Like, I only bet on myself. I only yeah. bet that we're going to win. Because, yo, there you was I mean? uh, are you, are you a soccer fan at all? I don't think I've ever asked you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, so, not as much. Uh, I don't follow, na like, globally as much as I used to when I was a kid. Because um, before I was a huge Brazil fan, so I knew all about Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, and and um, and and Kaká, and all those guys. But um, as I've gotten older, I'm more or less focused on U.S. men's national team, mm. U.S. women's national team. I focus on where they play, but I don't watch the global landscape. It's a lot. It's a, it's a lot of soccer to consume. Uh, I'm a big Arsenal fan. They're doing well in the Premier League this there year, and I watch I watch a lot of Champions League. It's also dope because it's on like a Tuesday and Wednesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And there's usually nothing on there. So yeah, 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 I'll throw the game on. And what's cool is with Champions League soccer, and I'll tie it into why I'm even bringing this up. With Champions League soccer, it allows me to be caught up when there's like Arsenal and Bayern Munich are playing. I get an idea of how the German league is mm. and then how the Premier League is. You mm -hmm. know, even though I try my best to watch Arsenal, but dude, being in the fucking West Coast is even worse because games are on at 4 30, yes, 6 30 on a Saturday. It's like, come on now, let's not get crazy. <laughs> but the reason why I bring this up is because uh people that might be listening to this that are big soccer fans or especially Premier League fans, because I do feel like the Premier League is the most popular one. There was a dude on Brentford, Ivan Tony. Okay. He was in a big gambling scandal and he got suspended. And it turned out that he was betting on them to win and him to score goals. And he was kind of like a human highlight, bro. Like, you, he, he was nice. He is nice. He came back recently. Yeah. But he got caught in this betting scandal, but all the research and the due diligence that was done on this incident, it's like, man, all his bets were Brentford money line. It was never Brentford to lose. And look, yeah. they're not exactly Manchester City. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, like, fighting for relegation for the most part, maybe top half, you know, creep into the top half of the table. Sure. But he was a guy that was betting in order to enhance his performance. Yeah. So, like, I don't want you betting on your sport. That's that's where I disagree. I'm like, yo, bro, don't do that. Like that That's where it gets. But if you are going to bet on your sport and if you're going to bet on yourself, I feel like I would give you more of a pass than if I found out, yo, Brentford's playing Arsenal, you got 100 fucking thousand pounds yeah right to use the british currency on arsenal yeah, yeah, yeah. and you play for brentford i'd be like oh maybe, maybe that that Shaky. have an issue yeah but in mma we've seen it dudes like put their fight bonus Just, on justin them. james, Mayweather. Justin yeah, justin james, james. my guy yeah, yeah, yeah he's put it yep. he put his fight you know he ended up losing yeah but yeah. mayweather would have all these bets that he would put on himself too yeah to win yeah i mean it like it, Ah, it's such a slippery slope. It's weird, it's, man. But, it's uh, but a it, weird conversation because also, like, my whole thing used to be even before NIL, mm. my stance, and it's, I still feel this way. I don't think college kids should get paid, like, a stipend or uh, a, a monthly thing. Like, I, I never agreed with that. Really? Where I disagreed was, bro, if I'm the star quarterback for fucking Michigan and we're out at a bar and we're there with our girlfriends or our wives, not wives, probably not in college, but like, girlfriends. we're with like a couple of girls and a booster comes in and they're like, yo, bro, great game, dude. Josh, you had 200 yards rushing and Nick, you're the man, you're the star quarterback. I'm going to take care of the tab. Why should we get in trouble for that? That's where I disagreed. If I could sell my name, image, and likeness like the NIL, mm. by all means. That's why I like the Terrell Pryor shit was dumb. Uh, the Reggie Bush shit was dumb. It's yeah. like, bro, why can't I profit off this? I'm yeah. not doing anything wrong. That's where I always disagreed with all that shit. Mm. I never thought that they should get paid like a salary kind of. That's because I, what's fair? Well, well, so that's it. That's man. That, that opens up another conversation. So for me, I always said from the beginning, the NCAA should be cutting checks to just to universities, to players, um, because the NCAA makes billions of dollars, right? 
to just sanction games. They're not doing anything. They don't have to put games on. They're just literally sanctioning them. And um, for them to pay them, um, you know, basketball, football, you know, hockey in some respects to certain schools, certain universities, like they're making billions of dollars off these sports. Cut these children a check. Like, and, and for me, I always said it should go with by seniority. You're a freshman, you get the least amount of money. You're a sophomore, you get more. You're a junior, vice versa, all the way up to senior year. So it incentivizes, incentivizes children to stay in school. You're getting money, but then also you throw NIL on top. Like my brother, when, uh, when he came on last week, he was talking about how they need to actually wait the schools and wait, you know, the uh, like if you're playing in the SEC or you're playing in the in the ACC or the Big East or whatnot, like those schools have a better TV deal, like that kind of stuff. They need to actually start to wait everything out. Like, well, this player, he was a, you know, Nick, he was a top 20 player in the country coming out of high school. Well, he's this, he's going to this school. This is how much he deserves as a salary. And they actually break it out and it's actually like mm. broken down. Um, but a lot of that kind of stuff comes with kids unionizing and, and that kind of stuff. Like they deserve um, some level of basketball related income, some level of football related income. They deserve it. They just they just do because they're not like like we said, the NIL doesn't profit for everyone. It profits for the few, but the many still still starving. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's why it's weird, man. Like if you're the, if you're the truth. You love NIL, but there's still people that. Are struggling with it, but to to go back to Jonte Murray, uh, Jonte Porter, excuse me. This isn't going to be the last of its kind, man. Mm-mm. It's going to become more and more prevalent. Yeah, uh, shit. We started talking about it a month ago, and there's been a new scandal every week. <laughs> yeah. So it'll probably be one next week that we open this show. With, Good lord, but... please don't be something big during <clears throat> the playoffs. Well, Jesus. Yeah, th- that. But also, shit, man. The Otani thing. I, I still think we haven't heard the last of it. I think that one is very, very serious and mm. you know if it turns out that the mlb is trying to cover it up because it is otani then that could get even worse yeah so i don't know man it's such a weird conversation because like i i love the space it's given me everything that i've ever wanted and i don't know if i sound hypocritical i wouldn't argue against it but <laughs> it's it's very obvious that there's an issue amongst the players um for you to even entertain that, to throw it all away, is crazy. Yeah. Because, like, if you get caught, it's a wrap for you. Yeah. You're blacklisted. You're out the league. Maybe federal crime. Right? Like, it's it's a big, big liability on your shoulders. Yeah. Uh, for me, it would just be, listen, you worked so hard to get here. You worked your whole life to get here. So to throw it all away over some money. But you're you're literally in the position to do what you love and to do what you've been working for and towards for so long. Couldn't do it. I got some questions because I asked people in the Discord. Shout out to all the members of the Veterans Minimum Discord. If you just go to the bio of every episode, uh, the Discord access is free. Uh, anybody could join it. There's over 150 members in there. Um, and then there's a separate tab that you need to be a Patreon member to unlock, which is like the betting stuff. But for the most part, the Discord is free. Um, and I asked how, how the fans feel about the betting influence on sports. Um, I wrote more and more stories are surfacing ever since Josh and I had the convo on the pod. Yeah. Um, and I got some good responses, man. And it's, it's shit that I've always talked about how it makes games more interesting. You have $20 on a game. It's a Tuesday. You're locked in. You're locked in. You're more inclined. So that was one of them that I got there. Um, Chris93 says, I have the same belief that betting puts more eyes on the product, but I'm also a conspiracist. <laughs> there will be four guys to cover up the faces of the league. Otani situation. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more, Chris. Shout mm-hmm. out to Chris for that. Uh, more regulation is probably needed, especially for the things like college props, like you were referencing. Yeah. And I think sports books do a good job of protecting the integrity of the business. Ben Coatsian clearly listens to the show. Um, guys like Bickerstaff from the Cavs, Rudy Gobert complaining about it. He says they're just in their feelings, which I also could see that, right? Like you never want to be on the receiving end of slander because of a bet, Mm. right? Like I think it was Kevin Durant one time tweeted out. He was like, yo, 
I never, I never see no money from these bets that y'all hit. It's yeah. also like, yo, KD, you make fifty a year, bro. No, no, no. That's he. That was KD. That but it was, was Durant. He was like, yo, yeah. you guys always slander us when we blow up your parlay. But you don't say but nothing. You don't, when you we don't give win. us no money when when you do win. Right? Yeah. So yeah. like, I feel him on that. I think that's a great response. But then there's other players that buy into it. You know, like Josh Hart gets a triple double, and he goes, yo, shout out to everyone that played my player props. So it's like these guys are aware of it too. So like, where do you draw the line? And as a league. You're making money off this. God, it sucks. It's yo, dude. <laughs> it it's sucks. It, tell me not, right? Yeah, like, yeah. If you're the yeah. league, you have sponsorships on your jerseys. Yeah. Your fucking courtside got FanDuel plastered all over it. Uh, the DraftKings sports bar and MSG yeah. is a real thing. I'm not making that up. <laughs> That's like, right. What do you when your players endorse it? Then fans are gonna use it. But then when your players get caught in it. Fuck that guy. We yeah, want he's out. a horrible guy. So it's like, bro, what are we doing? It's a weird, it's a weird dynamic, man. No, and you're then, right. You're you're 100 percent right. And then um, Crumb says the influence is increasing every year. More and more athletes are being busted for gambling. However, the growth of the sports betting, I'm not sure how you could prevent it. Clearly, in the NFL, a year isn't enough time, and guys are just going out learning about it and getting more clever ways to hide it. Yeah, but like, bro, what happened with Otani? Or what happens with any time something surfaces is because the money stops coming in. I'll give you an example. Say I played in the league. Mm -hmm. You're my boy. Childhood friend. We grew up together. Say I like the D-Gen. I'm like, yo, Josh, I'm only going to have 12 tonight. Even though I'm dropping 30 a game, I'm going to get my assist up. And then in the post game, I could be like, ah, I wanted to facilitate tonight. We're working on something different. I give you a nice answer. My points are down. My assists go up. You start betting on it, and you're giving me a cut. You're giving me a cut. You're giving me a cut. Eventually, I want to cut you off. I don't want to give you a cut. Or maybe you're like. The better. The better does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're making these bets on my behalf. And then I'm like, yo, bro, I'm giving you 5K every time you know we hit these bets. Now I want to give you 2K. How are you going to react? Not good. Not good. Eventually, some shit's going to happen. Like any argument that ever happens in history, yeah, it's one little thing that people blow up over that then the next, the bigger thing gets brought up. Yeah. And you're going to be like, yo, bro, I, want, I don't want 2K. I want 10K a game or I'm going to go to the media. You ain't going to do that to me, bro. I take care of you. You go to the media, shit hits the fan. And it's always people that... Eventually, the money gets so big where it's like, yo, bro, I don't want just that much. I want more. Or else I'm going to. So now you have blackmail. Blow the, blow the whistle. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what that's kind of what happens, man. So I think, I think that's really what happens. It's it's man. Listen, it's it's a scary it's a scary thing because, you know, I think everyone out there, um, all your viewers, uh, just just the growth of your channel and the growth of the space in general, it's only getting bigger. I tell everybody, I think the sports betting space is almost a quarter of the way of where it's going to be. Yeah, and, and that and, is... And, and if you think that it's big now, yo, it's going to be massive. There's a couple of states that still haven't allowed it yet, and yeah. we're talking like big, big states like Florida. There's like, you know, like the Hard Rock Casino is yeah. the only one, but it's only that general area. Yeah. Nothing in Texas yet, nothing in Ohio yet, nothing in Cali. Like those, you know, if you're into politics, those are like swing states, I think they call them, definitely mm -hmm. Ohio. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yo, you got these big ass states with a lot of people in them and a lot of influence. You got the whole West Coast, bro. LA is massive. Yeah. It's the second biggest market in the country. Yeah. You can't legally sports bed there. So it's only getting bigger, man. And the the ceiling for this shit is is through the roof. That's why I'm happy that I'm in this space. I'm happy that it's a passion of mine, yeah. and and I'm happy that I've been in this space from the beginning. Yeah, you know, since before, since, since before, way before. Yeah. I knew, yo, anyone that listens to my content knows I was talking. I'm like, yo, one day this shit's gonna get get legalized. Every year when I used to do this show with with the guys, uh, I used to do the show with, we would do like bold predictions for our year in review show, and every year it was like sports betting's gonna get legalized. <laughs> sports betting's gonna get legalized because there's just there's just a lot of money involved. Yeah. Ton of money. Close to a billion dollars a year in New Jersey from twenty fifteen to twenty eighteen before it got legalized was illegally wagered. 
Now, it also creates jobs, as silly as it sounds, because you open up a sports book, you got to have people making the odds, people taking the bets, people looking over your app, people creating your app. So it creates jobs. And then when it's legal, it's not as frowned upon. You could claim it on your taxes based mm -hmm. on like how much you actually win. Yeah. And it just becomes more credible, I yeah. would say. As opposed to being like, you're a piece of shit for doing it. <laughs> Oh man, no, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Now, now I know we uh, we have to talk about the Mavericks. We have to. Uh, this was this was a bet that you had placed months ago. Let's go, baby! And now it's coming to fruition. Go ahead and, and and cue that up. Well, yo, they're they're the five seed now. I really dove into the uh, the NBA once like football dies out, and now it's like the home stretch. And do you like the play in? Yes, yes. It was it was a little it was a little corny. Um, I, when it first started, I still want to see something uh, for lottery teams. I still want to see that, mm. like activating those bad teams into something in for the uh, for the draft. But um, but the plan is exciting. I mean, you know, it gives it gives teams that are on the outside still a chance. Like it's not like it's there's not the finality of the end of the season. Like we still if we could get hot, we could still make a run. Never know. Um, so it kind of gives a little bit more of a hockey feel. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, cause you know, like hockey, an eight seed takes out a one all the time. Like it's not a yeah, big deal. It definitely happens more often. You but yo, I, mean? I think we've talked about this before, man. These aren't your normal eight seeds and seven seeds. No, like, no. Dude, Durant and LeBron might be seven and eight seeds. Yeah, exactly. Steph might be an eight seed. Exactly. And you're one of these young teams like the Timberwolves or the, the Thunder. You're like, oh shit. We the two seed. Fuck, yeah. we got to play AD and LeBron. <laughs> We're probably going to be underdogs in that series. Every single game out. So it's it's not your normal the normal seeding. Last year, the Heat as a play-in team. Yeah, as an eight. Yeah. As the eight. And, and then the uh, final. Yeah, and I want to say the— um, The Lakers were, were a seven seed, too. And yeah. they, played, they played the Grizzlies. Yep. Yes. And they, they beat up on the Grizzlies. Yep. So it's not your normal— it's not your normal seeds as years past because I, I think the league is in great hands right now. There's a lot of talent. Like every team, for the most part, outside of like Portland maybe. Um, Pistons. Pistons. Wizards. Yeah. God, my Wizards. Yeah. But I'm saying like every team has that one guy that's like a league pass guy that yeah. you'd want to watch except for like those three teams. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, Scoot. Maybe, maybe Scoot. We'll mm. see. He's not Dame yet, but you know. Yeah, he's still young, so I'll give you that. Yeah, he's still young. <laughs> we hope we hope the best yeah, for Scoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, like every everywhere else, man, like there's there's a lot of talent in the league. That's why you see teams like, you know, when I was talking about the Mavericks, the segment that we had was, you know, seven through ten at the time that we were recording this was Luca, it was Durant, it was Curry, and it was LeBron. Yeah. And I was just looking at the odds, and based on the path. You give me Luca. In my opinion, Luca was the best player of all that bunch in in any of those series. Yeah. And now the way Kyrie's playing too, there hasn't been no issues, no headaches from Kyrie. Him and Luca seem to be getting along and they're playing well right now. And they're the five seed. And a couple of weeks ago I said to bet them they were thirty five to one. Now they're twenty to one. It was the same thing with the Lakers last year. Lakers after the All Star break, I bet them forty to one to win the finals. Mm. Come playoff time, they were twelve to one. Yep, because they were going to avoid Denver until they got to the conference finals. They get swept, cool, but whatever. They but got I, there. I, I ended up hedging out of that. You know, yeah. I, I laid juice on them to win the series. Well, the Nuggets that was in the conference finals. So I ended up making my money back on that because they were like a minus 300 favorite. So I was hoping the Lakers maybe win game one and then you could bet it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they ended up losing that game anyway. They got <laughs> swept. So there's ways around it. Like you're betting the number there. And I think, yo, you're looking at it, right? The Mavericks right now, if the playoffs started, they'd play the Clippers. Clippers were at one point like 26 and five mm -hmm. over a 31 game stretch. Mm -hmm. Seems like they hit their ceiling, got a couple injuries. Yeah. And then, yo, you also got to factor in the playoff issues, bro. I they, love Paul George. Paul George was my MVP pick when he went to the Thunder. I think he finished like third. Yeah. But he's had his four for 27 from the field. We know mm -hmm. about James Harden in the playoffs. 
the worst thing that Westbrook does is hit his first jump shot every game because then he thinks he's feeling it, and then he goes two of 18 from the field. Yeah. Kawhi, you could bank on to perform when he is playing. Yeah. But everything else, is there's a lot of question marks there. And, and also, they're just... It's it's like this, right? Yeah. It's like Mavericks are ascending. They're on a winning streak. They're playing really well, while the Clippers are kind of on the decline. And Descending and flattening I feel, out. I feel really good about this one, man. I feel yeah. really good about this. I, I think uh, the only thing, and I, I said this earlier on my show, the only thing that uh, for the Clippers to do something in that series, Kawhi's got to put the cape on. Mm. Every other person you mentioned – they wish to be where Kawhi Leonard has been. Kawhi Leonard's been a two-time Finals MVP for a reason. And I feel like with the Clippers, a lot of times he's able to kind of not hide, but he can kind of be a little bit more passive. They've got it like he's got to put the cape on. And then you guys can kind of get in where you fit in. You get hot, cool, whatever. But like he's got it like when you think back to those the, to that Raptors team, like Kawhi was getting a look every possession. Whether he took it or not was different, but every possession, it was running through him. Um, because when you look at the Mavs, uh, they've got matchup problems. You know what I mean? Like, there's matchup problems. Like, who's going to stop Luka? You know what I mean? Like, because Paul George, he's not the defensive stopper that everyone wants to make him out to be. Um, Kawhi is still very, very good on the defensive side of the ball, but he's getting a little older. So it's like you can throw bodies at him. But who's staying in front of Kyrie Irving? It ain't James, and it's definitely not Russell Westbrook. So it's like you know they have they have some. There's definitely some matchup problems. So that when I saw when I saw earlier um, that that's going to be the matchup, I was like, yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Because I, I I pull for the Clippers. I just pull for that franchise just because they've been they've been trash for generations yeah so you know i always want to see them move forward and possibly make a run but yeah they play the mavs in the first round that's not gonna be fun yeah and, and the way it's shaping up now like another reason why i feel good about this bet is hopefully okc stays at the top seed because mm. then the mavericks would avoid denver until because i i think it's denver bro like they're they're, they're kind of just cruising and then every now and then they'll have like that one game to be like yeah Y'all we still have, here. Y'all must have forgot, right? <laughs> like, Thunder, it's cute because you guys are new. And, yeah. You know, Timberwolves, that's cute, but let's not forget. And, bro, it goes back to what I was talking about. Remember last year, because we were doing the show last year. Remember last year when Denver played Miami in the finals mm -hmm. and everyone was bitching about how, oh, it's not a big market matchup. Like, who cares about these teams? That was one of the worst takes on the internet those couple weeks because – Denver, this could have been them going for a three-peat. Yeah. What was Golden State before Curry, bro? They were a laughing stock. Yeah. I remember Chris Mullen had to grab the mic and be like, yo, the new ownership, guys, don't boo them. Like, they were trash. Yeah. Like, in between the We Believe and Curry, like, it was some bad years there. Yeah. Terrible decision-making. And I think with Denver, it's like, bro, you go back to the bubble, Murray gets hurt. Then ACL. he misses all of the next year. Mm -hmm. So that's two years right there. They've kept the same core. Then they end up winning a ring. Like they bring back everybody for the most part. They're, I think they're better this year than they were last year. Yeah, It's like, yo, the, and the way you're looking at the team and the roster construction, they're, they're probably going to be around. So who's to say that this isn't the start of a, a new Golden State? Sure. Maybe maybe 18 months from now, we're looking at it like, yo, they just three-peated. And now all of a sudden it is a big market. Like Denver is becoming popular. Yeah. And they are a team that people really fuck with and want to watch. Yeah. Because, dude, I remember during the playoffs, they went like 16 and 4. They lost yeah. four games, I they, think it yeah, was. They, they, were, they were steamrolling people. Yeah, they were. And everyone was like, yo, Denver, what the? It's like, bro, this is, they just didn't get that many primetime games. Kind of flying under the radar. I, I, Jokic is a megastar, but like, don't talk. He wants to go ride horses in Europe and shit. He don't want to be here. Like, he don't want to be Parade. here. Bro. No, no. I, I want to go home, home bro. Home. Like, yeah, that's that's the European <laughs> swag. So my whole thing was always, man, Denver, this might be Denver. Because I, I still think it's Denver versus the field. I really do. Yeah, yeah. In in the West. No, no like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. No, no. I think in the universe. Uh, I, think, I think it's Denver. I think the fact that if you look at um, <laughs> you look at the odds right now, 
The favorite is the Boston Celtics. Oh, it's a good time to bet Denver. And the favorite to win the the finals is plus two fifty. The Celtics. Denver is plus three fifty. And they got the Clippers and Bucks at plus seven hundred, and then everyone else is in the teens. Mm. I feel like that's wrong, bro. Who who's Denver's first matchup right now? Denver's first matchup right now would be the winner of the uh seven eight play in. So either Phoenix or Sacramento. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. More than likely. Um it, honestly the best time to bet Denver would be hopefully they go down oh one or oh two. And then they rally back in the first round. Oof. That's a great time to bet them. But right now, you're right. No, right now is also a good time to bet them because they're probably the best constructed team, and they just did it. You know what I mean? Like, they uh, – it's funny that you mentioned, you know, last year and, like, how people were surprised. I never really watched Denver. I never really was a fan of Jokic. I always was like, oh, okay, he's all right, you know, whatever. But when I actually sat and watched full games, it was like – this white boy cold as I don't know what. Like, he's really, really good. And, um, you know, and then, you know, when you throw in Porter Jr. and you throw in um, uh, Murray and all their guys, like, they just, yeah, they, they're they they're an exciting team. They, and they play, a, they play a good team brand of basketball. So it is fun to watch them. <clears throat> they remind me of the Spurs. Yes, yes. Because also the Spurs had that same core for a decade. Yep. Which yep. you're looking at their roster now, it's... Porter's been there for a minute. Mm-hmm. Gordon's been there for a minute. Jokic, obviously. Murray, yep. the coach. Yeah. Shout out to Queens. Mike Malone and them, that system has been there. Yeah. So for them, and they and they have probably the most passive mega star. Like, he, don't, he just want to get his assists. Like, he'll go out there and drop 50 if he needs to. If I have to. But he'll have to facilitate. And the high pick and roll with him and Murray is like. Lethal. It's fucking, Yeah. And then Gordon went from a bust. Yep. So he's found his role there. Porter Jr. had the back issues, and he's found the role there. Yep. So I, I think this team is legit, man. I really do think that. I think I'm going to go and bet them. Or I might do like a Denver Nuggets and England parlay. <laughs> England okay. to win the Euro Cup, because you could probably get a nice, you could probably get like 18 to 1 on yeah, this. Yeah, England. England win the Euro? Oh, yeah. There's a dude right now, Jude Bellingham, plays for Real Madrid. He's 20 oh. years old. He's 20 years old. Okay. He's already the best English soccer player of all time. Shut up. All time? All time already. I've seen enough. Oh, come on. You're going, you're putting him ahead of Beckham. I've, I've seen enough. Bro, Beckham was way cooler than he was a good soccer player. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense though? <laughs> yeah, no. Like they, and he yeah. was nice. He was, he was nice. But he was he and, was a phenomenon and, and off when, the field. When, he, when it came to like playing, he was my favorite soccer player growing up. Yeah. And, then I, and, and then I just loved Thierry Henry. But David Beckham's like crosses and his free kicks, mm. he was a specialist. And he was phenomenal at that. Yeah. But everything else, he was he was way average. more like popular and was a superstar because he was a handsome guy, dated and then married a Spice Girl, who at the time was like, fucking holy shit, right? Victoria like, Beckham, God, yeah, bless they him. were a great girl, but they were like mega stars, right? Yeah. So like his aura was way cooler than the actual Product. soccer player that he yeah. was. So like Beckham, no, nah, I would say like he's he's better than Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, and all those guys. Okay. Those are our soccer fans. Yeah, here you going home. Frank Lampard over and and, uh, and and Wayne Rooney? Oh, Bro, I didn't think I was gonna throw Wade out Jude, there. Jude Bellingham is nasty. He should win the Ballon d'Or. Dang, you going Ballon d'Or? He's Bro, that he's, cold. He's, he's cool. oh, okay, he plays for right. Real Madrid and like shout out to Jude Bellingham. Yeah. I'll have to go look you up now. Yeah, Nick nah, is he's, Nick is giving me a little bit too much to think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wears number ten on England, so you oh, know he's, he's real. got my number two. All yeah, right, yeah, all right, yeah. nah, all right. but he's he, he's he's nasty, bro. He's nasty. <laughs> I don't know how we got into that, but uh, yeah, England, England, and Denver Nuggets parlay a hundred percent. Okay. Um, all right, I want to ask you uh, one more thing before we wrap. Yeah. Um, Rasheed Rice. What do you make of that, man? Man, listen, you know, because it was, it was, was it drunk driving? What was it? What was his situation? I think he got into an accident and left the scene. Drunk driving. Um, so, uh, (laughs) yeah, like, why does this happen? I know that's what you had said to me earlier. Like, why does this stuff happen? Um, the stuff that's, that stinks the most really is that 
you know, he was the he was the the premier guy for that run in terms of from the receiving room. Uh, Patrick Mahomes didn't have that much to believe in, and he was about all he had. Um, he had a little under a thousand yards, I feel like, for the season. But as a rookie, had a really good year. Um, obviously, you add Hollywood Brown to that mix. Um, you don't want to see him get marginalized. But we saw Sky Moore the year before. Sky Moore had a solid rookie year, wasn't great, but then makes huge catches in the Super Bowl to win the Super Bowl title. Thought Sky Moore was going to have a great year this year. Oh, we bring in Rasheed Rice. Rasheed Rice goes out, does well. Oh, we bring in Hollywood Brown. You don't want to see him get marginalized, but you see that the Chiefs could easily do it. Um, as far as other other players and other you know um, guys from around the the country. It's it's sad, but normal people do it. And so that's the part that sucks because we hold them to this esteem and this higher level that they are still normal people. Um, you would hope and you would wish that they wouldn't throw it away on something trivial or something dumb. But shoot, in Vegas, man, we've all been drunk and drove home ourselves. I have taken 13 shots and drove home. Sheesh. Like... You know what I'm saying? Like, it, so I can't, I can't hold somebody above where I'm at. It's not fair. Does it happen? Sure. Was that his night to get caught up? It was his night to get caught up, and that sucks. Um, I hope that things work out, and you know, what I mean, he don't have no more problems moving forward. But we've seen the Chiefs move on, <laughs> yeah. so that's the thing that sucks the most. Man, I feel pretty passionate about this, and believe it or not. Um, I don't be driving uh, under the influence, bro. Like, that's why when I go out, if I do go out, mm. truthfully, I'll have one beer. Yeah. Like, if you're driving. If I'm driving. Yeah. I'll have one beer. And oftentimes, dude, I'm, I am kind of get like a dark bottle, like a blue moon, right? So people so you, can't see You that. can't see where I'm at. And, and I'll just hold it the whole night, bro. Yeah. Just social, you know? Like, man, when I was 20, when I was 24, I drove home... I was way, it was bad. I shouldn't have drove. Yeah. And I get pulled over right in front of my crib. And if it wasn't for me getting pulled over in front of my crib, probably would have got locked up. Yeah. Real shit. I was fucking. You were, you were I hammered. was like, officer, my, my house is right there. God bless him because he let me off the hook. Yeah. I think if I wasn't, and it, and it was on some dumb shit, like I made a right when I didn't signal, you know? But still, no. And ever since then, bro. Don't do it. Yeah. I'd rather leave my car there. And I've done it mad times. I've yeah. done it. I've done it here. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't go out and get hammered, but yeah. to get behind, nah. I'll park at the wind. If I go out over there, I'll just leave my car. I'll take an Uber home. Yeah. I'd rather pay the $18 and then come back the next morning. I'd much rather do that. And and truthfully, I do do that. Yeah. I do that a lot. I'm not saying that. And I don't really get tank like that anymore because I feel like I have an image that I'm not portraying, but that I'm living in. I also feel like I never know who I'm going to run into. And I want to always be on. Yeah. That's why I like, I'll, I'll have a beer socially. I know I could have three, four and not be like yeah, all, all over the place, right? So I'm a very social drinker. And no, it wasn't always like this. Yeah. I used to always get hammered to like, I'm throwing up tonight. That's how I used to be. Like <laughs> white boy, throwing up tonight. White boy wasted personified, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I started taking my health and my working out more seriously, and I liked how I looked. And I was like, oh, bro, if I'm pissing it away on the weekends, why even work out? Mm. You know what I mean? So it got to a point where even now to this day, man, if I go out like, shit, I was telling my buddies, I probably drank like every single day in March, but like one beer, yeah, two beers. I was like, yo, am I an alcoholic? <laughs> I was just uh, <laughs> scratching my head. But not to the point where, like, I get wasted. Yeah. And I don't know exactly. They haven't really put out reports that he was intoxicated, but they were racing. Um, there was a Corvette and a Lamborghini involved. And, you know, dude, like, I tell people all the time, man, when I'm in the car with you, and this is going to sound terrible, if I'm in the car with you and you want to take yourself out, do it on your own time. Yeah, yeah. I'm precious cargo. I, I'm, I, got, I got goals and ambitions, and I like living. You want to take yourself out? Like, bro, there's been times where I'm in the car with people, and they're texting and driving. I'll grab the phone off their hand. And like, oh, I just you're them. that guy. Yeah, nah, yo, oh. yo. Hey, you want to do that? You want to do that? <laughs> Kill yourself on your own time. 
You're not taking me with you. Don't be mad because I'm good at it. You're not. Nah, that's even dumber, bro. That I'm a good, <laughs> I'm a good. I text and drive. I'm like sorry this. that I know how to do this. Nah. nah. Now, do now that. when I'm when I'm driving my stick, it does get dicey. <laughs> I nah. will say that when I'm, when I'm driving the Challenger and texting, that's the only time where I'm like, put your phone down, put your phone down. But if it's automatic, oh, we got. Yo, this. one of my really close friends now. We first met. Yeah. We got in the car. And he was driving and texting, and I grabbed this phone from the back seat. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I had never met him. First time I met him, bro. Yeah. Shout out to Jesse. First time I met him, I was like, yo, we're not doing that. <laughs> and he was like taken aback by it. I was like, no, nah, we're not doing that, bro. Like, and I told him, I was like, yo, if you want to take yourself out, you do that on your own time. Yeah. I, 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 I like what I'm doing. So, nah. And, and it ties into like, I got friends that like speed to red lights. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, like why? That, yeah. Why? Like, it's a red light. Red. When what dudes honk on me on the, on the, on the street mm -hmm. or like on the highway and then we end up at the same point, it's like, bro, I kind of just look at them like, look where we ended up. It's a red light, bro. Like, what are we doing? All this was really necessary. So I never, I never like, and you know what's the craziest thing about all this? I got pulled over doing a 70 and a 50 mm -hmm. in my dad's work truck. And I got suspended from Nassau County Police for speeding. Yeah. And like speeding, I did 20 over. Yeah. On a Saturday morning coming back from work. That's, that's but, reckless. But like I don't, but I don't drive fast. Like yeah. I'm not a, it's the only time. Yeah. And ended up working out great because I didn't become a cop. So I was able to do everything that I'm doing now. Cause wow. Because I, I was going to be a cop for Nassau County. Shut up. Yeah, I was going to be a op. God bless it. I, I learned new stuff. Yeah. You guys pull the, so, pull, the, pull the leaves back every day. Well, I mean, bro, it comes up in conversation, right? So I was going to be a cop for Nassau County, and yeah. I get disqualified during my application process. And while I was talking to my investigator, they said that for 18 months, you're going to have to be off the internet. You can't have social media, nothing. Well, I was building out the podcast. This is around 2017, 2018. Sure, sure. And that's when a lot of the fuckery started with me and the other guys because I was one foot in, one foot out. And I'm someone that, like... There's a door, bro. I have a big there's a door policy. Like, I don't ask anybody to be down. I don't ask anybody to do anything I'm not willing to do. And I don't ask you to fuck with me. Yeah. And I was doing everything that I hated to the other guys that I was doing a show with. But I, mm -hmm. I you know, my parents wanted the job security for me to be a cop and the pension and all that. And my dad used to be like, yo, bro, you'll be making all this money sitting in the car. Nassau County is like super upper class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worst crime is like someone shoplifted from a fucking Saks Fifth Avenue. Like it's it's like low end shit, yeah. you know, like old Brookville, like these places in Nassau County. And I didn't want to do that, bro. I wanted to create content. So I get disqualified, pay a lawyer fee, pay a lawyer fee, pay a lawyer fee. Still doesn't happen. And then it got to a point where I told my, my family, I was like, yeah, I'm going to blow my brains out if I do become a cop. So y'all decide what you want me to do. We could mm. continue fighting this battle that we're losing every week, or you could just let me figure it out with this content shit. And it's crazy because I got disqualified for speeding, and I don't speed, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really don't. Like, anyone that's in a car with me, like, when I go on long road trips, I want to drive. Oh, no. Yeah, and yeah, And then yeah. you don't speed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll meet you there, big dog. Nah, nah, nah. Like, nah, yo, I'm <laughs> telling you, bro, I'm a fucking... I'm an elite three stripe black belt driver. Really? Yeah. What's what's the most you're going over? It's it's a seventy mile an hour zone. I'll probably go 80, 85. Oh, you're a good man. That's fine. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I not can saying I'm I can tolerate that. If you if you're if you're keeping it right at the number, I'm like, nah, hey, bro. but like I don't be jerking the car and you won't be like sudden like I know how to drive, bro. Yeah, I'm a fucking yeah, yeah. all pro, first ballot hall of famer. <laughs> but it's just crazy to tie all this into this like speeding stuff. That happened with these guys. It's like, man, it's really not necessary, bro. Yeah. Like, it's so dumb. And and, uh, and don't get peer pressured by someone honking at you on the road. And I don't know. I've just, I've had, I've had a lot of people that I know pass away mm, or get into serious accidents. Okay. Okay. So okay. like, and they've been on both sides. Yeah, they've yeah, been yeah, the yeah. drunk driver or they've been, or they've hit been by hit one. by a drunk driver. Okay. So it's like, yo, bro, it's really like all these commercials that you see that it's not worth it. Like, yeah, it's really dude, when I drive, it. I have my phone face down and I'll vibrate because I don't even want to see it glare up. Yeah. Because then I'm going to look over. Yeah. Oh, I got to answer this. Now. It's like, nah, man, it ain't worth it, bro. Yeah, you good. You good, man. I, I'll tell you this. Uh, uh, I, I've come a long way at almost 40. Cause uh, first, I hope so. Cause for, you, 
coming out the bag in the blazer. Yeah, yeah. I, I've said this on my show before. I mean, I used to like Nick. I had a license to steal because my my car my car had a calibration on it, and so um, when I got to college, I realized you couldn't give me a speeding ticket because my speedometer wasn't. It was faulty equipment, uh, and so I would be going a buck fifteen everywhere, like everywhere, just getting it. And if I got pulled over, I'd pull over, and I would just be like, oh, "Okay, thank you, sorry, apologize, you know, sorry, speeding." And I would just take it to court, fight it, and they would give me a ticket for thirty five dollars because I had a faulty equipment, did not to do it. So I was, I was on the shoulder. Oh, I was wild. Like you see those those uh, those videos, like people in New York getting through traffic. Yeah, I was that guy, for sure. Not a question. So I've come a long way. No, I'm glad that you have, man, yeah, on a serious yeah. note. Like, yeah, no. You know, know, it's, it's easier to tell these stories because you're on the other side of it, and yeah. you're good, and you're chilling, and, you know, nothing happened to you. But, you know, it's just like you see people, you know, you had Henry Ruggs a couple of years ago. Yeah. You've had Dante Stallworth in the past. Yeah. You, you have this incident now at Rashid Rice and... Uh, Jamin Davis, actually. Jamin Davis on my re on my Redskins, my commanders. Um he was involved in some some uh, some uh, some speeding, whatever, some racing. Raced one of our other former teammates. Teammate crashes, kills his girlfriend. And he got cut from the league. Jamie went on, speeded again, and almost got ar got arrested. Almost got uh, um, almost went to jail for it. So it's like, yeah, like how long is it gonna take you to figure out? Don't do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it's hard, bro. 20, 22 years old, 24 years old. No, nah, it definitely is, man. It definitely is. And I do feel like an old head talking about this kind of stuff. But like, yeah, yo, I was I was doing dumb shit too, man. I was doing dumb shit too. But yeah. like, not to that point. Like, I never, it never speed. I think the fastest I ever went in a car was like 120. My dad was in the car and my uncle. Oh, snap. My and you were driving 120? Yeah. Why were you we were out in the Hamptons? Like those are huge straightaway. Uh -huh. And my dad knew that. Like I don't really. He's like, oh, step on it. I was like, I don't want to. He's like, oh, come on. Uncle's in the back. We get pulled over. Like he's a cop and shit. You know? Okay, yeah, you, you got a little. Bro, bit and of... I, I went. I went like one twenty, one twenty five, and my hands were shaking. Really? Yeah, I don't. Oh, you don't like it? Nah, nah. Yeah, nah. see, I was always speed dimming as a child. Nah. The fastest I've gone in a car. Fast, I went in my Challenger. I got my Challenger up to 165. Shit, man. And then um, Jerome's S-Class, uh, coming home from prom, I was half asleep. And uh, to stay awake, I had a straightaway on the highway. And, um, <laughs> and I got up to 175 in that one. And that, I will tell you that S-Class, it, it, it zoomed up there. It didn't have no problems. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, we could... My my uh, my challenger start getting the shakes. Like, <laughs> like, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Got to bring it back down slow. So it happens. Yeah, I, I've drove some of my friends' cars back home. That like, you know, you had a Cadillac, like the like the sports car, like the the, uh, the like, CTS and stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I'll go like eighty, eighty five, and then I'll be like, oh shit, I don't even feel it. You know, mm -hmm. like sometimes you don't even feel it in those cars. But yeah, still, man, I just think that like you know. Um, he he emerged with the Chiefs like he he's, he was a big reason why like it was him yeah. and Kelsey were getting like seventy percent of the target share legit and now he's going into year two he's only going to elevate you know like he he was a diamond in the rough for them where they found him like he mm -hmm. panned out and for Mahomes in this offense to have a dude like that it opened up things for Kelsey also and. When when they did double and triple team Kelsey, they went to him and they felt confident. So like from a football standpoint, it's like, shit, man, we finally found a receiver. We don't have to spend big money on. Mm -hmm. And now this happens. It's unfortunate, man. It's unfortunate, and I, I think he, he'll probably get suspended. He'll be made an example of. I'm not saying for the whole year, but sure, sure. they'll probably hit him with like four games or six games, something like that. And you know what? They should. I think they should. Dang, that sucks. It's better that something. You know, like oftentimes, man, just as people, we kind of wait for the worst thing to happen in order for us to change. Sure, sure. Where, and that's what everything. So for him to maybe learn his lesson from this and it wasn't tragic to the point where, like, you know, it was a bad accident and, and he fleed, but like he didn't lose his life. Mm. You know, no one else did. No one else did. And yeah, yeah, it's a bad, terrible accident for sure. I'm not, I'm not supporting that, but shit could have been worse. Yeah. So, Hopefully he learns his lesson, man, because you don't want to see this stuff.
You don't want to see this stuff with anybody. But like you said before, how we started this conversation, it gets elevated because you are a public figure. Yeah. That's always going to happen. Yep. Yep, yep. I love it. I love it too, man. Fun conversations, bro. Um, thank you to everybody that's been listening and supporting the show. Uh, we will address uh, on the next episode why we haven't been recording at the studio. But uh, we should be soon. We should be soon. Um, exciting times. Fun times. Very stressful times. Uh, I will say, first quarter of the year was pretty rough for the boy. Stress brings progress. Yeah, ooh, I like that. You like that, that one? That was good. That was good, yeah. You write that down. You got to write that down. That's a <laughs> caption, bro. That's a caption. That's not bad. At Nick Day is 10, as you can find me, all things Veterans Minimum or where you could find Veterans Minimum. Josh, where can they find you? The American Fan 365. Uh, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Please make sure you continue to support my guy, Nick Dais. And, uh, yeah, excited, excited times, man. Uh, conversation with Mike Bibby this week. Had my brother on, Jerome Junkyard Dog uh, Williams, last week. And then, you know, just continuing to get more and more. As we get more in the NBA season, I'm going to probably have uh, Randy Brown on soon, talking about Bulls years, bring on some championship rings. He lives here in Vegas, so excited. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll see you guys next time. In his element, I'm a gold medalist, bronze like your medalist. So many deer in headlights, but it's bedtime. Hear that supper bell, main course, beat of venison. Zab. Most dangerous game. Either kill or be killed.